Hey, there you are, Leroy. I'm gonna let my, uh, let my um, student do the rest of the attendance. And I want to introduce you and, and start you off. Um, right. IT is here in case you need help loading your PowerPoint. Um, Leroy is a, an activist, a comic book writer, and scholar from Berkeley, uh, area of California. He does a lot of work in the intersectionality of disability, race, um, and um, he works a lot with uh, political issues like the the industrial prison complex, as well as things like disability related issues. Um, he also um, has done a lot of work in the hip hop field. And uh, I think you have a concert coming up, right, Leroy? Yes, in July. Um, and he's going to be talking to us today specifically about some of the history of disability and race in comic books going back from um, Misty Knight and Luke Cage and, and Black Panther, ones you may be familiar with, to some of the less familiar independents that uh, deal with everything from Black identity to the industrial prison complex. So I'm going to let Leroy take over. And afterwards, we'll have some time for some questions. And um, you can ask him, you know, really rack his brain on comics if you wish. Or, you know, uh, same thing with um, race and disability and hip hop. So we'll give him some that brainstorming, right, Leroy? Right. Hey. All right, why don't you uh, start? And then uh, this is my class, and we have two other people online. So uh, a couple of other classes online. Amy. Yeah. Okay. Someone head to age 130. Hello? Yeah. Hello. All right, good, good, good. Well, thank you for having me. And yes, I'm Leo Mar from Berkeley. I've been doing um what's called Quip Hop Nation. Hit the white test. Hop Nation is an international um network of um disabled hip hop musicians and other musicians. And um, the event that's coming up in Jan in, uh, in July is an all African um, hip hop Bay Area tour. So um, disabled African musicians are coming here from Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Uganda, the Congo, Tanzania. So they're all coming here to the Bay Area to do um, a Bay Area tour around around the Bay. So that's in July, the first two weeks of July. But I want to talk to talk to you about um, Black Disabled Comic. Characters. And I have a PowerPoint. Did did it go? Did it go up? Yep, we have it. Okay, I don't see it, but okay. It's right on the screen for us. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah. we have it. Hmm. Whatever's on your screen, Leroy. We're seeing what's on your computer screen. Oh God! No, 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 no. So, okay, so a black disabled comic um, character is the reason why I put it together because like everything else, like hip hop and other things, there's black disabled comics in the comic arena. So I wanted to put this together to show, um, to show black disabled comics um, a lot that, that you don't know because a lot are local or don't have the bling bling as, um, you know, um, big time publishers. So I put this together to show that, um, that Black to Zero com comics are out there and we'll just go through the whole PowerPoint. Let me get to page one.
So you, you see page one? Yes. Yes, we got it. All right, cool. All right, let me get it larger on my screen. Hold on. Yeah, I'll just bring it all the way up on your screen. All right, cool. There you go. So, you know, you, you can read right here that um, I wanted to go back to 1975 with Marvel, um, Misty Knight. Misty Knight was, I think, one of the first black dissolved women comic um, character, and I go back to 1975. And the story about her is she was a uh, a cop as he got injured on the job as he becomes a superhero. And so that's 1975 Marvel to um, Handyman with um, Fox Network and In Living Color, 1991 to 92. Handyman was this black superhero. Um, that um, was in living color. I think he's like the first black disabled man superhero. Yeah, of course, in living color was a comic skit. And uh, it's funny because a lot of um, disabled community got mad about Handyman. They thought that Handyman, the character, was um you know teasing people with disabilities. But come to find out um did Dwayne Williams um grew up with a disability. He had a club foot. So handyman was a um was a, a stretch for him because he grew up um as a disabled um, young Boy at the time. So next is uh, Mantis. And Mantis was 1994. And he was a scientist. And um, at night um, was out um, looking after the city. And that's 1994 on Fox. And of course, now you got Luke Cage on uh, 2006 on Netflix, and his partner, his partner, go back to Missy Knight on the, I think it's the third season where, he, where she gets shot and she comes back with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with one arm. With, uh, a, a bionic arm. So, in um, my my comic book is coming out in February. So, I hope to um to um include my my comic book. It has um the superhero Roxanne, and Roxanne gets more um more um she, she finds out about crip hop nation and she gets more confidence about her abilities and her on um, wheelchair turns into hip hop where she scratches and she's an MC and she um takes over New York and she goes back into time to where where I was in New York, because I grew up in New York. So if you go back to 1979, where I am uh, on the outskirts of a cipher, and she showed me my future of Crip Hop Nation. So that's the story of um, my comic book that's gonna come out in February. Any questions before we go on to slide two? Um, 
Um, when you say mantis, that was actually separate from the mantis uh, the character that we see in DC, right? That was a separate character altogether. That fox. Yeah. And you yeah. include um, um, cyborg in your group as well as a disabled black superhero. Oh yeah, yeah, I had that one. Thank you. I'll add that one soon. So the second slide, let me go to um, a video that um, Quip Hot Nation um, group called Current Clockwise did this video um, like three, three, four years ago. And it, it 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 deals with police brutality, but it also deals with how Crip Hot Nation comes together to take to take over the police. So I'll wait now. Can you drive any faster? Damn, baby, I'm about to go crazy up in this desert. Damn, once you hit every bump in the road, why you gotta drive like that? It's a bumpy road. My pill. Oh, man. Now what, Deacon? What they say, Right, 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 right
So that's kind of clockwise. Um, I'm going to speak about them, him, them later in the PowerPoint, but um, they do a lot of um, graphic novels and Google graphic videos and um, as on um, the YouTube series. So you can check them out. Comic Clockwise with a K. So let's go to three. Back to um, you, Missy, Missy Knight, and you know I talked about her in 1975. Yeah, good. Or this one I just found a couple of days ago on um, Slut Court is um. A fictional character, superhero, appearing in um, American comic books published by Marvel Comics. She first appeared in um, New Warriors by U1 in August 1990. Um, there's, there's very little about her character. It's a uh, a video on YouTube that goes and tells about her um, family and her background. But as you can see, she has crutches and she uses those crutches as um, a magic um, weapon. So yeah. So this is um maintenance um a science fiction television series that aired for one season on Fox Network uh between August twenty sixth, nineteen ninety four and March third, nineteen ninety five. Um the original two hour plot was produced by Sam Ramy and developed by Sam Hum. And really the the story is that um he becomes disabled and he spends his life trying to find a cure to walk again. Um, MS, MS Grimm, MS Grimm is a hip hop artist. I have interviewed him like three times. Um, he's from New York. His, his book came out in 2007. It's a, it's a graphic novel about his life. He was also on Sesame Street as a little kid. And um, his novel talks about um, him going out trying to become a hip hop artist. Um, he got shot, like I think 10, 10 to 12 times. And this is um, before 50 cents. <laughs> so um, after he got shot, he, um, he um, went to jail. Um, because the, the cops thought he was selling drugs on the corner. And so he went to jail for, I think, five or six years, came out and um, started his own record company and um, got into comics. So his record company expanded to comics and this is his first book and um, like I said the book um, captured his life as a little kid 
on Sesame Street thing going to hip hop. Uh, then um, his stints in um, in jail and coming back to um, do his on record company. It's a really good book. I think I think it's one of the first um, comic hip hop comic book that features a person that's a wheelchair user. Like I said, I've interviewed him like three times so far. Going back to Connie kind of Clockwise, Connie kind of Clockwise um, did an animated um, film called Forever Land. And I'm going to play what um, Deacon Burns, Deacon Burns is a part of Connie kind of Clockwise. I've interviewed him. Um, at least four or five times. So I'm going to um, play a little audio about what, what he feels about his, um, his artwork. Yo, what's cracker like, everybody? My name is Deacon Burns, a.k.a. Professor Xavier a.k.a. Ironside, a.k.a. Joe Swanson, and I'm in an alternative punk hop band from Cleveland, Ohio called Counterclockwise. And in the year 2007, I broke my back, and I thought that my dreams was over. I thought that making music, it was over. I was ashamed, depressed, even embarrassed to be seen in my wheelchair because I was a rapper, and I didn't think nobody wanted to see a crippled rapper in a wheelchair. It took me like four years to gain my confidence back. And the girl I was with at the time just kept giving me support. Like, you can do this. you still dope. You're just sitting down. It's all good. Then one day I just finally said, F it, you know, I am still dope. And I decided to live my truth. So at the end of 2011, I put out the first kind of clockwise album called Daylight and Savings Time. So when we did our first video, I wanted it to feature people in wheelchairs friends and people with disabilities. So I hired the Cleveland Dance and Wheels Dance Company that features dancers in wheelchairs and able-bodied dancers. And that's when I got a message from this dude named Leroy Moore. And he told me about Crip Hop Nation and that they had artists with disabilities all across the world in it. And I was totally down right away. So when it was time to do our next video, I was on YouTube surfing, looking at cartoons, I'm a big comic book, animation, cartoon geek. And I came across this dude named Jim Lujan. And his cartoons were amazing. So I sent him a message on YouTube, and we clicked right away. And he did our first animated music video called Moonwalk. It turned out so dope. We did two more videos right away. One was called Outside the Lines, and the next one was called Whip. And when we did the WIT video, I wanted to feature Leroy Moore and have the entire Crip Hop Nation animated in the video. So I wanted to inspire those with disabilities and wheelchairs that felt down or depressed about their situation, like I did, you know. Just because you have a disability or you can't walk doesn't mean you have to give up on your dreams, no matter what situation you're in. So after Jim Lujan did the three animated videos for us, we worked so well together, we decided to make a full-length, hand-drawn, hip-hop, sci-fi, animated, musical comedy film called Counterclockwise in Favorland, where the main character and hero was just a regular guy in a wheelchair. And the movie turned out super dope. Then we released the Counterclockwise in Favorland soundtrack, and then at the end of that same year, we released a mixtape called Pills. Then we put out an EP called Ironside. Then I started writing, producing, and directing the spinoff from Kind of Clockwise in Featherland, a 10-episode animated series called The Great Adventures of Kind of Clockwise, and we released a pilot late last year. It's now on YouTube. You can check it out. You can also check out all 11 Kind of Clockwise music videos, the full-length movie Kind of Clockwise in Featherland, and five Jim Lujan cartoons that I did the music and voiceover characters for. It's all on the Counterclockwise YouTube channel. So make sure y'all check that out as well.
and also did the soundtrack for the new Bill Plimpton and Jim Luhan animated movie called Revengeance, which played in select movie theaters all across the U.S. And it'll be on Netflix sometime like around April next year. And we're about to put out a new kind of clockwise album in January called Sounds Good on Paper. Plus, I'm also making the music for and playing a character named Naughty Boy Swanson, a famous mumble rapper in the new Jim Luhan web series called All That Glitters. So if you want to check out all the kind of clockwise projects, we got 70 songs on our SoundCloud page. And you can check out all the albums on our Bandcamp channel. And they're both under counterclockwise, spelled with a K. K O U N T E R C L O C K W I S E. I want to give a big shout out to Leroy Moore for putting me down with the legendary Crip Hop Nation. And it's been an honor. Good looking out, you guys. Peace. So it's counterclockwise. Kind of yeah, check out their work. They're really, really good. I really like them. And um, also, um, Colin Clockwise and Crip Hop did a film on, on Nelly Ladson a couple of years ago. He was an, he is an autistic black youth that was abused by um, cops in Virginia. So we put out a music video about his story. And that's, and that's on YouTube. Uh, this next um, slide is um, a wife and husband team, and they put together David Rucker and Roz Alexander, and they put together um, a comic series on their website, and it really deals with um, David Rucker. Um, he, he gets sick and he becomes um, this superhero at night where he leaves his body and um, really takes care of the community. He, he also goes back to the hospital and he has a revenge toward um, this nurse. This nurse was totally terrible with... Um, her patients. So um, he went back to the hospital and had regained on this is a nurse. So they're, they're in San Diego. I've interviewed them and their, um, their comic um, series called Recall and Giving is on their website at um, recallandgiving.com and you can read about um, their series. They're still looking for a publisher to um, publish their comic series. And like I said, they live in um, San Diego. This next slide is um, an animated um, series that's going to hit on TV soon. And it's all on um, children with disabilities. Uh, Leonard Joshua Leonard, I've interviewed him and he talks about, um, you know, he's not disabled, but he really wanted to put together um, a cartoon or um, a series around disabled children that are superheroes. And I can um, show you the, the short um, video of that, hold on. So that, that's a little preview of it. Um, he's still working on it. 
I think he he just had a successful um, Kickstarter to really bring it to um, to the big screen. I'm going to interview him next week again, just to follow up, um, just to see where he's at now. And it's it's very rare to have a quote-unquote able-bodied black man to do to 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 do uh, a cartoon around disability. So I'm glad that he's doing it. So this slide, I have had I've had um, a really great opportunity to interview um, DMC. Uh, DNC is from the legendary group Ron DMC. And DNC is into comics. Uh, he has his own comic um, company. He put out two issues of his um, comic book. And uh, I'll play um, a little audio interview with DMC. You know, one of my favorite graphic novels was uh, from a hip hop artist, MF Grimm. He has a book yeah. called Sentence, you know, who was shot 10 times in the 80s, and you know, now he's a world changer. So, you know, would, would you ever do a comic book with a character with depression or a type of disability? Well, yeah, that's all going to be in my comic book. I started my comic I'm sure you're familiar with my comic book. Yeah. So we're up to issue three, and um, we are not going to not address any human conditions. My comic book will address all human conditions, and it's almost like everything that exists that people can go through, we're not going to be afraid to talk about it. So to answer your question, yes, my comic book will be dealing with depression, low self-esteem, suicidal thoughts, substance abuse, as well as social issues, politics, and personal issues. Not only personal things that I went through, but personal things my editor and my, you know, my editor and chief and staff go through. Because it's important to use that medium. You know, one of the reasons why I started the comic book, um, I started the comic book on, um, with um, encouragement from Rick Morales, who was Eminem's right hand man over at Shady Records, you know, during the rise of that great kingdom. Oh, wow. And Rick told me, he said, D, you can do this comic book. He said, you can do everything you've always done with your music and more. You know what I'm saying? Because it's art, it's yeah. words, it's literature, it's visual, it's imaginary, it's creative, you know what I'm saying? It's artistic, it's colorful. So everything I was able to do with my music, you know, Randy MC's music always inspired people, always motivated people. We even educated people oh, yeah. about being preachy and stuff like that. Yeah. So what we're going to do with this comic book is, of course, I'm going to address depression and low self-esteem and substance abuse and even suicide. Okay, so that's DMC. And uh, me and my nephew wrote um, a, a review of, of the comic book, and that's on Poor Magazine. So, the next slide is an LA artist, Otis Smith. And matter of fact, he's, he's, he's on. Uh, his new comic book is coming out um, the ending of next month. But he, he also helped me with, with, with my comic book. Um, he deals with African history, African um, traditional um, history. And his next comic book is going to deal with his disability and um, all about him. So I've interviewed him last week, 
I want to share what he says about his own comic writing. Okay. Okay, so I'm here with Ollie Smith. And we're going to talk about his artwork, his comics and painting. He's a... Uh, a black brother with a disability, so, um, you know, let's get into this, you know, as a black disabled artist, visual artist, and comic book writer, please talk about the themes of your artwork. Well, right now, my current theme and my current focus is black disability and history or Abandoned 
collecting paintings for the last three years by digital painters. And all of them have a crib pot scene to them. I have three paintings so far. And the, the goal is to have um, a big um, um, digital art show in 2020 with all these paintings. Um, like I said, I had three so far, most of them are done by um, disabled women of color. And his is the first um, black disabled man that did a painting. So, the next um, slide comes from Ghana, Africa. And um, I, I interviewed the author and she did a comic book. It just came out last month. Um, with a superhero that has um, cerebral palsy, um, her crutches, are once again, um, weapons. And um, I, like I said, I interviewed her. You can go to um, quitpotnation.com and read the interview. And um, me and the, the comic um, company is talking about um, collaborating to have um, a comic book that, that reaches Africa and America with um, disabled heroes. So I, I hope that will be in the works in a couple of years. And the last slide is my comic book that's coming out in February. Um, the cover is done by um, a local artist, Asian Robles. He's a local Asian artist. In San, in San Francisco Bay Area, and he did the um, the cover, and the cover has on um, Roxanne as a wheelchair user. She's you know rapping and um, and and she's in a cipher, and um one. One, one character in the book is on um, Rob Denoy's temple with um, a hat here. And he's a real person. He's he's um, disabled and he is uh, he's in the Sugar Hill Gang, one of the first hip hop um, groups that, that came out in 19. 79, 1978. So he's on um, the DJ in the Sugar Hill Gang. And he's also um, one of the co founders of Crip Hot Nation. And also in this book, it's, it's going to have um, the legendary um, Cast 2. Cast 2 was a 
good, good to be artist back in 1979, one of the first um, good to be artists, and he also had a disability. He had one arm. Um, he did graffiti on subways. You can see the second picture. The second picture is him, and his graffiti is on New York subways. And he lost his arm uh, doing graffiti in the subway. And um, at, at an early age, and he um, continued to do graffiti taught himself how to um, paint with his other arm. And um, so he's in the book too. So the, the Quip Hub comic, the Quip Hub graphic novel is really a story that says that people with disabilities have always been there in hip hop. And it also gives, um, inspiration to Roxanne to continue her love for hip hop by seeing herself in Quip Hop Nation. So that's it. Any questions? I will start with questions that the class might have, and then I have a couple. So, guys, have any questions? They're shy this week in the beginning of the semester. Uh, let me just move around here. I realize you can see me a little bit better. Actually, you know what, Amy, I'm going to get you to pull the camera around here. Leroy, can you see me now? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, you saw the class. Um, I just wanted to kind of ask you where you see the direction of. Just put it right there for a second. And then you can turn it around. It's um, not just that. Yeah, it's okay. You can turn it around afterwards. Um, so what do you see is the direction of disability and and race uh, for kind of a future? What do you what do you see as the possible future? Uh, that's a large question. I, I think in, in the arts, you know, in, in hip hop and graphic novels and things like that, it's like really um Digging deep for our stories and bringing our stories to the forefront, and and I, I think it, it's really happening now with um, QuipCon that, that's happening at Syracuse University mm -hmm. in April. Um, you know, through my work at Quip Hot Nation, there's so many um, hip hop artists with disabilities. Uh, coming out and really um, being um, active about their disability, you know. So what, what I see is it's more and more happening on a, on a mainstream level. You know, I really, I really would love to have this um, hip hop graphic novel um, be picked up by Netflix or um, um, the people that did Black Panther, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And um, so you'd like to see it done more publicly, um, but what, what kind of themes would you like to see more explored? Would you like to see more that deals with reality, like the um, MC Griffin uh, piece that dealt with the prison complex? Or would you like to see more that deal with the superhero uh, philosophy, the the kind of fantasy element? I like I like the mix. I think I think that that you know my graphic is it's a mix of what really is happening to the fantasy of of Roxanne. So I I would like to see a mix a mixture. Um, really, um, you know, telling the stories that, that, that are out there and that have been out there. Okay. Um, guys, come on. Give me a question. Who is your favorite comic book character? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, 
That's hard because I'm not. A loaded question one to ask. I'm like choosing a child. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because I'm not, I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm only recently got into comics. And the reason why I did the Queer Cloud graphic novel because there's nothing really out there for hip hop discipline and um, comics, you know. I think I I don't know. I I like Luke Cage, you know, when when when, when it was out. Um yeah. I, I like I like I like the the comics that you know, back in the day that I found like Missy Knight, you know. Yeah, Misty's got, there's also a new character. I don't know if you've seen or not um, in the Iron Man series that is uh, similar to Misty Knight. It's another young black girl. Um, I don't believe she has any prosthetics, but I do know that she had to have kind of like a, uh, an Iron Man type uh, situation for, for the, so there's something that she needed the Iron Man suit to help her. Oh, very similar to the Misty Knight storyline. Um, other questions? Anybody else have a question or about maybe uh, not necessarily comics for those of you who aren't as big on comics, but just in general for Leroy about disability, race, hip hop? Okay, Amy, you're welcome to ask. Uh, you don't hide you in the corner. Well, I, I choose to hide myself in the corner. It's nice and cozy over here. But there, the few of us our age, we grew up with Static Shock as one of the main comic book influences that were uh, that exposed a lot of the a lot of America to black culture for the first time in different situations. And Static Shock got his powers from the Big Bang, which was essentially being in the wrong place at the wrong time, chemicals, explosion, but it was due to a gang, gang violence. And I was wondering what you thought about Static Shock and how he's unintentionally influenced a lot of the, gen, the young adults now because his series ran a good time on Cartoon Network mm -hmm. when we were growing up. And he really was one of the first black superheroes that our generation was exposed to that dealt a lot more with hip hop being a young black male in America, as well as it was touched upon gang violence, as well as racial stereotypes. And a lot of, there's a lot of racial issues, as well as the implications of what happened with the Big Bang because the Big Bang caused mutations similar to the X-Men and that it granted powers to some, but then there ended up being some who had to hide their face because of the disfigurement happened by the mutations. So did you get all that, Leroy? Yeah, I did, I did. Yeah, I really, I really like static shock. You know, I really like the storyline. You know, I really like what, what, what he's doing in the storyline. And and I I would I would like to see because there's, there's there's a lot of like, um, characters that become disabled, mm -hmm. but I like to see someone who started out as disabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I was wondering about your feelings about how much of the black disabled characters seem to be disabled through violence as opposed to other means. And I wonder if that's, that's a, a poor reflection of a stereotype in itself. Yeah. Like somehow their disability is a result of gang activity or, you know, e even up to static shock. I mean, it's basically the Flash's storyline, but instead of a brilliant scientist creating a new energy source, it's gang violence, but it's the same basic um, story of how they all get their powers. Yeah. But in the, the black community, it's tempered with violence. Even to a certain extent, uh, Killmonger in, in 
um, Black Panther had that same kind of uh, stigma to it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 getting it's getting really for me it's getting kind of boring. Mm-hmm. You know, they have the same storyline, you know, over and over again. You know, um, yeah, like, like I said, I, I would love to see a black disabled kid that just grows up, you know, as disabled. You know. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, when did you say that your comic book was supposed to be released? When's your comic book come out? Yeah, February 10th is, is the first um, book launch. So after February 10th, you can um, get it at um, poorpress.net. Is it only available through Poor Press or will you be having it uh, through like Amazon or other means? Um, you know, right, right now it's only poor press. Uh, I, I try not to deal with Amazon. I know it's it's easy for people to get it there. Uh, I know you have a love hate relationship. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So at least for a couple of months, when it's out, it's going to be only on poor press, and after that, I will think about doing it on Amazon. And uh, you know that might be something to some of my, my many of my students here are, are business majors. Um, how hard is it to kind of get published, particularly if you're going to be in the independent world without any kind of major uh, publisher or major house supporting you? What 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 do you have to do to to get noticed and get a publisher? Oh, it is it is so hard. It is so hard. Um, you know, Porn Magazine, I've been, I've been a member of Porn Magazine for the last 13 years. So, you know, they, they, they do um, a book class every year. So they publish just small books, you know. As a matter of fact, my first book from 1999, 1998 was under Poor, poor Press. And so now this book, um, coming back to Poor Press, you know. Well, yeah, it's hard, you know. I've, I've only published two other books that's not under Poor Press. You know, it's, 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 it's very hard to, um, to get a publisher to look at your stuff, especially now, you know. But, but but now you, you can do it, you know, on your own. Because really publishers nowadays I mean they they publish your work but that's all they do. They don't push it out there, they don't do any PR. So really you know, um most of the steps are is in your pocket, you know, to do. And that was going to be kind of my follow-up. Do you think it's easier now to do a, a straight online digital system? Like whether it's a digital, uh, we see lots of digital comics nowadays. We haven't really pursued that yet in this class because the class just started, but they're going to see a lot of digital comics um, that are published strictly online, as well as, you know, you, you since you do hip hop music, you know, certainly a lot of music is now digitally published and, published um you know via online mechanisms rather than any kind of distribution network so do you find it's easier to do it by self-publishing and 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 going online creating your own website or creating your own digital content uh and publishing it that way or do you think kind of going out there and trying to put a print version is still um it's so good. It still has purpose. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm old school, so I, I like the print version. I like to hold it. I like to touch it. You know, I, 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 I do. Uh, I write re- reviews, and every other that I approach to get their book, like DMC, I was like, you know, can I get a book to get a review? He's like, oh, it's online. He's like, oh, I'd like to have a 
a hard copy. So, yeah, for me, I, it, it's all about the hard copy. But even doing it online, you you have to work with the artist. If you're not a visual artist, you have to work with the artist, you know, just to make sure that your message, you know, comes across in the art, you know, and after that, then you have to really um, look at the website if it's going to take the artwork. Because, matter of fact, um, Poor Magazine right now is having trouble on um, uploading my book because um, they we, we, we use Amazon's um, platform, but it's on Poor Magazine. But Amazon's um, book platform got bought out with King Kindle, so it's a whole new platform. So we're getting used to that. And that platform, they have um, they have like um, examples of formats. So if your book doesn't fit in that format, then in your school, and my my book is like three times my book has been sent back because they're because it's 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 because Amazon has their own format. So we're going back and forth, you know, as we speak about my comic book. Yeah, that that's a a thing I've heard a lot about this formatting issue, kind of really strangling creativity. I mean, I think back to the day, I don't know if you ever saw Raw, if you were in San Francisco, but you know, those comics were literally handmade. And, you know, they're, they're considered almost priceless nowadays. And yet, you know, you, you can't even, you have to fit into the preconceived. Yeah. yeah. That Amazon or, or other publishing entities have and Amazon's the big one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my book has has like two um songs on it, two lyric songs on it. It doesn't have a page number. So so the the format of Amazon is going, you know, off the wall and you be going back and forth for the last four days, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions, guys? Thoughts? Leroy, do you want to leave them with some ideas of, of both if they want to publish, what they should do, and what they should look at to read in the future? Yeah, I think publicity is just getting your name out there. I, I worked with two newspapers. You know, um, I published in local newspapers. Um, I, I've interviewed a lot of people, so when people Google me, they, they see, oh, Leroy interviewed DNC, and Leroy interviewed um, KRS-One, so that, that comes out, and that pushes your name for, uh, up on the um, social network, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that's a good thing to do. Um, what what to look out for? Um, I think I think all of of what my um, PowerPoint has has has, has showed. Um, there's a lot of artists that are coming out with their own books, and and also I would like to say that um, to really challenge. Um, Comic cons because they're so ableless. I mean, so ableless. I I I went to um, my first local comic con last year, and they invited me to, to do a workshop. And I got there, and it, it was running late, and you know, I, I got to my room, and they just said, "Oh, yeah." Your work has been canceled. I was like, what? So 
Yeah, Comic Cons are really cutthroat. <laughs> you know, oh, I yeah. found out that they're really, really cutthroat. And if you don't have a real big name, then they just push, push you off into this little corner of, of a little room that, that nobody's going to find. So I say really push back on Comic Cons and, you know, try to educate them on 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 the diverse comics, you know, disability, you know, queer comics, you know, people of color, yeah. Hi. Oh, well, any other thoughts? If not, um, yes, we have someone else. Um, so I do have a question. I was wondering what inspired you to start Crip Hop uh, Nation and how you went about gaining did you get to hear that? What inspired you to create Crip Hop Nation and how you got your community going? Well, I, I, I always loved music, you know, from the blues all the way to hip hop. And I'm, I'm an activist. So and, and I, I also used to do this radio program on KPFA in Berkeley, a, a radio station in me. We did a three-part series on hip hop and disability, and after that series, I said, "Kind of let, let me go deeper," and that and that's when I that's when we started Crip Hop Nation. So it's been ten years, eleven years, and it just it's growing. I mean, it's international. We got chapters all through Africa, Germany. UK, um, you know, we, we put out three CDs, we put out another CD this year, and all all women CD, which is really cool because um, hip hop um, really don't embrace disability and they don't embrace women with disabilities. So, um, so Crip Hop was putting out that CD this this year. And um, like I said, we're doing this um, Bay Area African tour, which is really cool. I mean, we do this with, with no money. I, we do this on an SSI budget. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really um, cool that it's, it's still happening and people really come together to um, keep it going. And what role do you really think social media has played in, in helping you? Oh, big time. I mean, I've talked to people from Brazil, Africa, Germany. It just, it keeps us in contact. Um, you know, it, it started on MySpace. <laughs> Back when my thing was happening in you know Twitter and Facebook, um, well, yeah, I mean that that's how I got to to um, DMC. I got through his Twitter account, and, and I had some can I interview you? And he's like, yeah, and and he's like, you know, I, I'm down with Crip Hop, you know, so that that happened on Twitter. So yeah, social networking is really important, especially with people with disabilities because of other um, ableist um, airlines, you know, we, a lot of people with disabilities don't fly because it's, it's not accessible. So um, social network is a really um, good avenue to connect into, um, into Organize. All right. Any other thoughts? All right, Leroy. I want to thank you so much for for joining with us and and uh, giving us some of your uh, your insight and uh, your experience. I think it's been great. Yeah. Thank you. And you take care. Yeah, and I'll see you in Syracuse. Okay, I'll be there. Bye. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Say bye, guys. Bye.